hey everybody, my name is Alex, and I've got the uh, better, smarter half of me here, Spencer Damor. Um, and uh, yeah, everything that Eddie was talking about, we try our best to stress test this whole industry and vet out bad projects and bad bad security techniques and bad hardware. I think what Eddie was referring to with the hardware wallets is that we really like the Nano Ledger because it just uses a superior chipsets and memory. So there's all sorts of really interesting things like that when you get deep into this technology in this industry that uh, you can spend hours and hours and hours learning on. As you can probably see, I've got my six screens on the computer here to help me absorb information at an accelerated rate. Um, I'm, but I think today we should focus mostly on the mining. So I've got just a little bit of a script here I'm going to follow. And if anybody has any questions, please, please throw your hands up or just throw something in chat. I'll try to get to those right away. Um, in the meantime, why should you mine? Um, so cryptocurrency is always, generally speaking, the majority of cryptocurrencies uh, are supported through what's called proof of work. And this is that number guessing that the miners do. And maybe you've seen pictures of these warehouses in China full of computers, or maybe you've seen pictures of all the people with the graphics cards mining away at the rocks. All these different technologies uh, the security mechanism, what makes it trusted to allow all these people to put money to the, literally to the trillions of dollars into these different techno, these different coins, these blockchains. It is the proof of work model. There's different technologies that are moving forward and they're starting to get away from the proof of work model, things like proof of stake. But in the meantime, this really is the safest, most vetted, most trusted model for putting money on a cloud. Uh, and that's what's so powerful is as a miner, you get to contribute you get to vote in the future of blockchain because you mine the coins and you mine the, the upgrades and the changes that you like. Uh, and of course, uh, it also teaches you. You learn a lot by participating in this aspect of it. You start to understand how it all works, why it all works, why a lot of products have value that others don't. And uh, you certainly get a more fundamental technological pr perspective and appreciation for everything going on. So uh, why should you mine? Well, if you're long on cryptocurrency and you assume the coins are going to be worth more later, it allows you to accumulate at a discount. If you're long on the space, there is no cheaper way to accumulate over time and holding. The majority of people who try to time the market get wrecked, and the majority of people who try to trade in and out of the market get wrecked. 85% of people who try to time markets do very poorly. Dollar cost average statistically performs the best across just about every investment market. So by accumulating a little bit over time, whatever you can, while still remaining to have emergency funds and you know keeping a diverse portfolio and healthy investing practices, uh, you're going to have the best experience over time. Uh, mining allows you to do that at a massive discount. Think of a think of a miner as a discount to ride or as a discount to, uh, to play the blockchain game, essentially. So when is it profitable? Well, anything under, anything under 16 cents a kilowatt hour is likely to be profitable for consumers. And this is here in Canada. Uh, and anything under 9 uh, cents a kilowatt hour is likely to be very profitable enterprise scale. Um, this would exclude developing countries that are heavily rate or, or heavily regulated countries where rates are going to exceed 20 cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, but most North American areas and modern countries, uh, outside of a few uh, European ones, you'll find that uh, this is wildly profitable, even just at a hobby level. Uh, some enthusiasts that Spencer and I work with have even built rigs that accumulate uh, over $122,000 a year. And when you, when you understand that a computer in your basement can make you tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, it really is an interesting paradigm shift. Um, now, professional miners, of course, can gain an edge by moving their operations into regions or to different situations that have the cheapest electricity, or in general, by taking advantage of the lower rates reserved for industry. There are some of the primary, these are some of the primary reasons why mining has kind of turned into a serious capital intensive business. Um, but certainly, Ethereum mining can still be done at home on, at, at, as a profit. So, uh, it's still accessible for most, especially since it can be done at a consumer level with consumer equipment, the same equipment you would buy from the, the Best Buy or Future Shops or the comp local computer stores. Uh, normally, you'd want to be using equipment from AMD or NVIDIA. These are the two manufacturers. For miners living in regions with low electricity prices, um, this can actually turn into a strong source of income. 
I can't stress that enough. This can be a passive income that one day with enough equipment, which can, can be as few as, as, as few as a few machines, can take over your day job. Uh, a variety of calculators exist, uh, and we'll go through those in a second. Um, so I think, the, I think the primary reason for all this is passive income. Uh, there's other advantages like treating cryptocurrency as a business, being able to depreciate the value of your machines every year and write that 15% off. Your electricity becomes a benefit. Space in your home or work uh, becomes a tax benefit. Uh, so there's a lot of different things you can do by treating this as a business, even just with one video card at home. Uh, I really encourage everyone to go look at the CRA guidelines for cryptocurrency in Canada. Just type that into Google, CRA guidelines, cryptocurrency, and uh, you'll understand the difference between paying capital gains and treating it as a business asset very quickly. Again, most of these are, are guidelines currently in Canada. So certainly speak with a, a, a tax agent, someone certified and accredited, uh, but take advantage of these, these kinds of interesting benefits that we can, uh, we can get a hold of. If you're holding large sums of cryptocurrency and you're able to leverage those into your company, this can be a massive benefit at the other end. Okay, so um, generally speaking, I'd like to see consumers right now stick with NVIDIA products. They're far easier for everyone to pick up and use. Uh, the 3000 series are really the cards you want to look at. The 3060, the 3070, the 3080, or the 3090. These cards are very energy efficient and they have a good calculation of souls per watt. The, the best card, if you're gonna go put your name on a list and you wanna do this with the least money in, the 1060 or 3060 Ti, 3060 Ti. If you just go to your local computer store and get your name on a wait list, uh, when those come in, that card's uh, I think under $500 generally speaking, if it's a manu MSRP, manufacturer uh, price point, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty good. Um, You'll, you'll, you're able to pay that card off incredibly quick, uh, even under th two, three months right now. Some people are seeing uh, cards pay for themselves in as little as 30, 20 days. So when you understand that going and buying a video card, plugging into a computer, and then accumulating those coins very quickly uh, and having that same value, all of a sudden you've got skin in the game, you've got equipment, and you've spent a very small share of that on uh, power consumption. Okay, so how does it actually work? How does this mining work? Uh, well, we're going to stick mostly to Ethereum because a lot of these projects are forks of Ethereum. It's kind of the, uh, some people might argue, but I would say it's the most evolved uh, level of blockchain right now. You've got Bitcoin, which was like peer-to-peer -peer sharing. It's like uh, Napster, but without able to, being able to copy and paste it. Then you move into Bitcoin, which is that double spend problems Satoshi came up with. Ethereum is kind of pro programmable Bitcoin. Bitcoin works in almost like assembly language. So you're pretty much speaking in Bitcoin like you're talking to a robot. This makes it really difficult for people to program it. Uh, you're almost at the hardware level. Whereas with Ethereum, it's very close. It's, it's a compiled language. So it's, it's very similar to Java. Uh, so it's essentially English. And this makes it far more accessible for people to kind of do these really cool projects and technologies on. Um, so Ether was designed to only be mined by consumer equipment. Uh, which is a huge contrast in comparison to Bitcoin, uh, which is a, a effectively mined with only specialized devices referred to as ASICs. Uh, these, these are a ASICs, application-specific integrated circuits. Anytime you've seen warehouses of all those machines, generally speaking, what you're seeing is ASICs. Now, what's really difficult with that is it's only profitable at scale in really low priced power regions. So they have a really short logistical cycle. So we don't advise this to people. Now, making an algorithm like Ethereum that is ASIC resistant is theoretically impossible. They did this in an effort to make it very decentralized and very secure because of that. Also to allow everyone at the human level to participate, which we think is pretty cool. But uh, theoretically, it's impossible and it's, it's even harder in practice. Um, ASICs are designed for Ethereum uh, mining and uh, they, the algorithm is called FHash and they were eventually released in, in late 2018. However, these miners only offer a relatively modest improvement over GPUs, graphics cards that you would get at this local store. Uh, and this is in terms of hashing efficiency, but they still remain profitable nonetheless. So people still participate in ASICs 
on Ethereum, although with the dynamic nature of the coin and the constant updates it's going through, it's not something we would advise people to purchase. You're far better using that consumer level equipment. Um, so, so there's also another type of device. We've spoke about ASICs and we spoke about GPUs, application specific integrated circuits. Those are machines that are just made to mine Bitcoin. They just guess, number guess one type of number. Uh, the equipment in them are good for just that one calculation, just that one algorithm. Uh, the GPUs are consumer cards. These are used by people to play video games, to make music, to do research, artificial intelligence, anytime video, people are video compiling, editing videos. All these different things use these same video cards. So they have a large application after you're done mining with them or in the industry at large. And because of that, they retain their value over a period of time quite well. And if you wait till markets like this where the bear cycle turns into the bull cycle, you're actually often able to get more than your three or four video, three or four year old video card cost you to purchase in the beginning, which is really wild when you think about it. But there is logistical tricks to all of this. You got to pay attention. Um, but there is, there is one more kind of device that can be used for mining. And this is for the technically savvy people. It's called an FPGA. This is, stands for Field Reprogrammable Gate Array. These are kind of the middle ground between ASICs and GPUs. They're, they allow some configurability while still being more efficient than GPUs at particular types of calculations. Not all calculations, but certain particular ones. Um, generally, generally uh, in that data intensive type stuff. Um, these are exclusive, though, to high-level programmers uh, and hardware enthusiasts. I strongly, after doing many research cycles with Spencer on these things, I strongly only suggest people to get involved with FPGAs if they themselves are informed in this technology or they're keen on learning because you can learn, but understand there will be an, a lot of learning that needs to be accomplished before you're effectively using your FPGA. So for the majority of people, we suggest... Uh, really just sticking to the GPUs. Uh, so we strongly, strongly recommend at scale or for consumers just sticking to GPUs uh, for many reasons. In home mining settings, it's, it's, there's a couple things you want to keep in mind. Uh, anytime you're mining at home, you want to, it's, it's vitally important. You want to make sure you never overload your home electrical grid uh, with excessive power draw. Do not do this. Do not overload your main or do not overload your breakers. This is each plug itself or the entire house draw coming into the panel. Now, this is gonna be outside of the scope of most people, and I'm positioning this as a very scary thing. 99% of you will not have enough equipment to make this a concern, but it is a concern nonetheless because fires suck and insurance does not like people that start fires because of overloading their circuits. So the grid as a whole and each single socket are only rated for maximum power draw. And these certain types of mining devices can actually easily surpass those thresholds if you start including multiple cards or multiple machines on a single circuit. Wiring could fail and overheat, pausing or causing a imminent fire hazard. Consult experts and evaluate your setup. Uh, all wiring upgrades should be done by certified professionals and all rigs should be drawing less than 80% of the overall capacity of that outlet. Again, let me say that. Anytime you're mining, both on your power supply, on your wall outlets, and on your overall power coming into the warehouse, building, home, shed, etc., you should only ever be drawing 80% maximum. Now, this is more than anything else for efficiency. Once you pass that 80% threshold, you introduce additional risks, but more importantly, you introduce more loss, which lowers your efficiency, which eats into your profits. So you'll find your, your accumulation, your ROI will be hurt by that. So yeah, eight, load your rails, load your rigs, load your sockets, 80%, nothing more. Okay, now what's really interesting is most home outlets uh, post the 70s are going to be 15 or 20 amp. Uh, so most, most consumer miners can operate on a single plug, no problem. I, I, let me stress that again. A single plug, no problem. Most of these video cards are going to operate somewhere around 100 uh, watts. Now, what's really interesting is we have many things in our homes that run at 100 watts, uh, you know, like a light bulb. A 100-watt light bulb literally 
uses the same amount of power as your video card that's drawing 100 watts. So this is an incredible comparison when you think about it. Because how many light bulbs do you have in your house right now? Using that same amount of power on a video card, you'll be generating dozens, if not hundreds of dollars a month. It's incredible. Um, so now let's get into the parts. Normally, the mining software itself is not very well supported on Macintoshes. Oh, sorry, Warren, did you have a question? Oh, no, okay. Um, so normally the Macintoshes are not well supported for the mining software. So the majority of people do these on Windows or Linux computers. Uh, both are very easy to use. Spencer and I use Ubuntu, which is an open source free Linux software, or we just use a free version of Windows 10. Generally, we suggest getting your licenses, but because the machines are really only being used for mining, once they're updated, if it keeps asking for the license, it doesn't change our, uh, our mining possibilities much, uh, which is interesting. So now when it comes to parts, normally you don't wanna do this on a laptop. Some laptops, some gaming laptops currently in China, because of the GPU shortage, people are buying all the gaming laptops and using those for mining, which is nuts if you ask me. To do these types of things on a MacBook, it, it risks overheating the devices. They're not designed for this type of constant uh, throttled load. Uh, so what I would recommend is using a desktop tower. Now what's really cool is you don't need to spend a dime for a desktop tower. If you go look on Facebook Market or Craigslist or your local uh, listing, I'm sure you guys can get computer towers free of charge all day. And I encourage you guys, if you want to do this as a hobby, jump on Facebook and go grab a bunch of free computers. Bring them home. The most wait, wait, you just said free computers? Like, oh, absolutely. Like People are giving old desktops away all the time. Now, they're not going to be very good parts, but these mining computers don't need fast CPUs. They don't need uh, intensive uh, motherboards. Uh, yeah, so Kevin's just mentioning, yeah, it's very easy. And I, I can't stress that. And if you guys want free computer parts, come see us up over by UBC here in Vancouver, and we'll give you free comp computer parts. This stuff is, is there's not a, a large bar of entry. What I'm trying to say is you can use an old computer from 10 years ago, throw one video card in it, and uh, yeah, totally good. So let's talk about the parts. Generally speaking, if Spencer and I build computers for ourselves or for clients, we do so with the intent to keep adding video cards to that specific computer. Generally, you can run up to 12 cards, sometimes as many as 19 cards once you get really good at this stuff. The advantage of running more video cards on a single computer, the video cards are generally what makes the money. The computer and the processor, the RAM, the hard drive, and the power supply also have a running cost. They also consume power. So by running multiple cards on a single rig, you're actually reducing your overall power load. You could certainly run 12 cards on 12 computers, but you'd be, you'd be five more parts worth of power on every single computer. So this is why we focus on the efficiency. Now you can buy these, these mining specific motherboards as well. Um, normally we would look for a motherboard that's using at least eight or 16 gigabytes of RAM. We like the mining expert motherboards or the BTC Pro motherboards. They allow for 13 or 12 video cards and they, they work pretty well. We have warehouses full of those computers running stable. Um, so when you're mining on a computer, because of the calculations that are being done, you certainly want at least eight gigabytes of RAM, but in most cases now, you'll want 16 gigabytes of RAM on that computer. And this is just for things like Ethereum. If you're mining it with modern cards, multiple cards, there will be a lot of information go going through that memory. Uh, but most things now I would recommend at least 16 gigabytes of RAM in a computer these days anyways. Uh, now, also, I would recommend at least 256 gigabytes as a hard drive. Uh, normally speaking, uh, these SSDs, the solid state drives are really fast and they're about $30. So if you've got an old computer, one of the really easy things you can do is grab one of those $30 hard drives, 256 gigs. You're going to increase the speed a ton and that'll kind of help you with any of the bottlenecks that older equipment has. Um, now, of course, it, the Ethereum mining uses a lot of what's called runtime memory. 
So when you do set up your computer initially, if you, if you Google how to set up runtime memory, in Windows or in, in Linux, it, run, it works a little bit differently. But what that means is you're setting part of your hard drive, your memory, for actually doing these computing. So this is called your runtime memory. And if you guys have a computer at home and you haven't ever turned up your runtime memory, if this is for mining or not, I think you should all turn that up today. And you'll find that your Firefox and your Chrome and running different apps and things like that will work a lot better. So very cool. I recommend adding at least four gigs. If you have a lot of hard drive space, you can add six, eight, or even more. Um, now, okay, so now the most, the most straightforward way to mine Ethereum is by joining one of the reputable pools. We like Ethermine. Okay, now there is other pools like Nanopool, F2 Pool, a whole ton of other options. But we've been using Ethermine for many, many years. We've tested quite a few. And it's what we find is one of the more reliable and safer options. And what's also really interesting is it's one of the largest pools. So they tend to be the most profitable. The whole idea of joining a pool is so that you, you change your random number guessing chances into steady, steady, predictable, uh, expectable, or sorry, expected profits. Um, so the way this works is you could guess numbers by yourself all day. These video cards are guessing numbers. When someone guesses the right number of a block on the blockchain, that blockchain gets that block gets unlocked because they've got the right password and it goes up to the blockchain. All day, people are throwing their computers at blocks. Anytime someone sends a Bitcoin or Ethereum to someone else, we're all guessing passwords on that block on the blockchain. Eventually, someone gets the right one through sheer force, through sh through literally sheer chance. There's no way to game the system other than simply guessing more numbers and doing what's called organized guessing. So by guessing, like if we all in here, Warren said one, I said two, David said three, Eddie said four, and we followed that kind of cycle and we all guessed numbers in a sequence together with our machines, we do what's called increasing our luck factor. So this is really cool. This is what we share the reward every time one of us get it right, but it increases the amount that we would generally make. So overall, joining a pool is normally the best method. Uh, you're going to get your, your really expected, really, really desirable results that way. Now, you, you could pull the lottery and, and try and do what's called solo mining and hope that eventually you get a block. But uh, that's just, it's, it's so unpredictable. And it's, you might go six, seven months without ever getting any coins. And then you get your six Ethereum. Or your, so it's just not something I would ever recommend, your two and a half Ethereum. These days are not the days to be solo mining. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys really quick here on screen share. I don't know if you gave me the screen share, Eddie. But I'm going to show you guys just some of the real quick ways to set this up. And then I'll get out of your hair. So if you guys have any questions, I'll, I'll look and chat or you guys can ask me. Um, so let me pull this up here. And so I'm basically going to show you guys the whole process to where you can get this information and then how you would set it up. So I know it's going to be, it's going to go quick, but Eddie's going to have this saved and up. So I hope you guys go join that and share it with your friends. And some of this stuff will be uh, easy for you guys to see. So I don't know. Can you guys see that uh, screen there? I can't see chat anymore. So if someone just says yes, that'd be great. Yep. We see Beautiful. a screen. Okay, so what we're looking at here, guys, is a website called BitcoinTalk.org. Now, like any website, you got to be real careful. Don't trust just anyone. But as you can see, this, this website is a chat board, and it's one of the original ones for Bitcoin. All the mining software that I use that's open source, I get from this website because I know that the links that come out of this website are usually pretty good. So, for example, let's say we're, we're mining on those NVIDIA miners that we're talking about, those new video cards, the 3060s, the 3070s, the 3080s, or the 3090s, or quite literally any video card for that matter. We would go to BitcoinTalk.org, and we would look for T-Rex miner. Now, here's our version, T-Rex 0.19. This is a new NVIDIA. See here? This is not for AMD stuff. This is for NVIDIA. And it's going to let us mine a whole bunch of different caches too, which is really cool. You can see here's all the different algorithms that it supports. Now, there's all sorts of different coins, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different ones you're going to be able to mine. These algorithms are all used by different coins. ETH hash is Ethereum. ETC hash is ETH Classic. 
Kapow, X16. These are all different types. Prog, Pow. These are all different types of uh, number guessing, essentially, different types of algorithms. Uh, so what we'll do is we would click on the GitHub right here. It's, and this works. There's a few miners I'm going to recommend. The process is the same. We're going to make sure that we grab the latest version here, T-Rex 19 CUDA 11. Okay. Now, this is what's called a, a GitHub. GitHub is really powerful because this is an open source repository where developers are doing most of the blockchain stuff. Any, anything blockchain that's worth its weight, I feel, should be open source and on the GitHub. And as you get smarter, you can actually start reading this stuff and going into the software. And eventually, you might even actually be able to contribute to GitHubs, which I think is super duper cool. So we would download this file here and we would save it. Now, one of the things you're going to encounter here is your computer is going to think that this is a virus. And I, and I want to explain why. Um, malware normally mines on computers these days. Uh, so all of your automated virus protection, anything that mines, it's automatically going to assume that you as a normal user are not part of that 1% of the, the computer base that's actually making money from this stuff. They're going to assume that you're one of these people that have been infected. So what you have to do is you have to whitelist the GitHub in your virus protection, and you have to whitelist the file when you download it. If that's too difficult and you're not able to do that, I normally just turn off my virus protection while I'm doing this. And then when I turn it back on and it recognizes this miner, I say, hey, no, that miner's cool. That miner's making me money. So if you guys have any questions, you can reach out to me afterwards on social media or on Facebook. But uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's just how to whitelist files and websites in your virus protection. Um, and then you're able to download no problem. So now we've got it downloaded. I'll show you here. This is what T-Rex Miner looks like once you download it. Now, every miner is going to look a little bit different. But you can see here, we've got a couple different things. Like, what's going on? We've got Wooly Pool and ETC and CFX and RVN. These are all those different algorithms I was talking about. But for the majority of us, we're only going to be looking at Ethereum. So I've gone ahead. I've actually set up a miner to show you guys an example. So let's, this is what the folder is going to look like immediately, almost the same. What do you have to do to set it up? It seems kind of intimidating. Look at all these files, these bat things. A lot of people don't know what this stuff means. A lot of people would go ahead and click T-Rex and it's not going to work. Well, what you want to do is you want to click on ethermine.bat. You want to right click that or, or open it as a notepad. Okay, very cool. So let's edit this. This information here is what we got to edit. So there's only two things you want to add. I'm going to show you how to find that information. Depending on what part of the world you're in, you're going to change this part right here. I used US2 and Ethermine because US2 is West Coast. US1 is people who are on the East Coast. There's also Asia and there's also EU1 and 2. Now, this stuff, we're all going to leave the same. We're not going to touch any of this stuff, and we're not going to touch any of this stuff. But we will touch this one right here. This is super important. This is your wallet address. Now, if you guys don't have a hardware wallet like the Nano Ledger, please, please, if you take anything away from this conversation, please get a hardware wallet. And what you want to do is you want to put your public receiving address, the address that you normally send your Ethereum to, you want to put that address here in the wallet. Now, I've just created this wallet brand new yesterday. I just started mining coins to it so I can show you guys some examples. So let's take a look at how that works. So again, pool information. How do we get that? Where's that coming from? Okay, let's make it real easy. See here, you go to ethermine.org. This is the pool, one of the world's largest and, and best performing pools. You come here to ethermine.org and you click on start mining. Here's your server information. You got your Asia 1, EU 1, US 1, US 2. And that you're going to copy this information here if you need to or if you're using other, other mining software. And then you've got to put the port in. Outside of that, uh, like I said, this, no this notepad will actually have all that. All I had to do to mine, and thanks thankfully Spencer took a look, I just had to change the, the 1 to a 2. And then I had to change my wallet. That's all I did to my config. And then it was done. Okay, so it's done. My file's good. We know, we know now how to get the information from Ethermine. Cool, cool, cool. So what's it look like when it runs? Well, here's 
a calculator. This is a website called What to Mine. It's a little technical at first, so I'm going to show you guys quickly how it works. You got all these different video cards up here, right? Okay. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and picked one 5700 XT. But let's let's do something a little more modern. Let's do 3060 Ti. Let's do one. So let's say you the, the next thing I'm going to explain to you is how to actually get these video cards. Let's say you went ahead and you used a 3060 Ti. We need to come down to here. We're going to put in the hash rate that that card gets us, which we can find out from Bitcoin Talk. We're going to come down here to the cost. Now, most residential power in British Columbia, where we are, is about 14 cents a kilowatt hour. So I'm just using 11 cents a kilowatt hour American as an example. Now, what we've done is we picked the cards that we have. We have 13060 Ti. We've picked the chain, the coin that we're going to mine, Ethereum. Okay, we said at 60 hashes because that's what BitcoinTalk.org told us the card was going to do based on the recommended settings for the 3060 Ti. And then we put our power rate in here. Now, what's really interesting is if you have lower power rates than 14 cents, you're actually going to be making screaming money. I can't stress that enough. So we've got the important information in. We're looking at profitability over 24 hours. We're looking at the average of the last 24 hours. And now we're getting our information from all these different exchanges. So let's hit calculate. But boom. Okay, so now we roll down here. And right here, we see Ethereum mining is actually the most profitable coin we could be mining for this card. So there's all these other hashes down here. I want you to ignore anything that ever says nice hash. Nice hash are bad actors and they do not perform well. It's very easy to use, but they often your money will go missing. They manipulate your data. And the team has recently spent time in jail again for stealing their users' data. So this is not one we want to use. But if we slide down to here, there's all these other products. Okay. Now, if we want to see the prices for these, we would just go back to Bitcoin Talk and we would look up what that card does on each one of these algorithms. It's We would just go to the bitcointalk.org to the 3060 Ti page and we'd say, okay, what, what hash is it doing on Octopus? What hash is it doing on Zelle? Now, this isn't important because there's lots of different ways to calculate it. But generally speaking, Ethereum is going to make you a lot of money. So as of right now, your profit in a 24-hour period is seven dollars and eighty five cents? How friggin' cool is that? So that's making that's making you eight bucks American. You know, a little more than that. Uh, is that per eight. hour or per day? That's per day right now, and I've seen that as high as thirty dollars right now. So it all just depends on the global hash rate. But this is really interesting. So these cards are paying themselves. This is a this is a five hundred dollar card. And what's really interesting is Spencer and I mined most of our Ethereum at one hundred and seventy dollars. So it was costing us at the time just under $170 to create. And uh, now we're selling that Ethereum for, you know, 2100 US dollars here in the near future. So when you when you when you mine and hold, you make a lot of money. So I want to get finished here because I don't want to take up too much time. So let me teach you guys how to get how are we getting cards? Everyone gets mean to me. They say mean things to me on Reddit. They say mean things down to me Twitter. They accuse me of stealing all the video cards. I don't steal the cards. I just know how to get the cards. And that's what we do for our clients. So I'm going to teach you guys all my dirty little video card secrets. Right now, you want to make sure that you're not paying markup for cards. Because if you pay too much for a device, it's going to affect your return on investment. That's going to increase the amount of time it takes for you to realize your profits. So there's a couple ways to get video cards at manufacture, manufacturing suggested retail price, MSRP. That's what we want to look for. We want to look for MSRP. Now, all the manufacturers just raised MSRP because they could or because the memory is getting more difficult to purchase. But nonetheless, this is EVGA, okay? MSI, EVGA, NVIDIA. You go to these manufacturers' websites, these companies that make the video cards, the 3060 Ti, and you sign in. You create an account. What we're going to do is we're going to sign up for the wait list, okay? So I'm gonna click here on 3060 Ti. A lot of people don't actually know that this is a wait list, but it totally is. So right now we can see it's out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. 
these are the cheapest prices you're going to find anywhere of these cards right now. I cannot stress this enough. Generally speaking, you'll pay hundreds of dollars else, elsewhere. So what you want to do is you want to hit notify me. And you're going to, you're going to sign up the CAPTCHA because people are using robots to fill these things out right now. And you put your name, email in there. And you got to make sure you watch for that email. Do it for all the different cards you're looking for. Heck, do it for all the 3000 series cards. Because if you catch that email, and that, that email will bring you right to this page, and it'll say, in stock. Buy that puppy. It'll make you a ton of money mining. But even if this ends up not being your thing, you can throw these video cards on places like Facebook Market or eBay for three, $400 more than you paid right now. So even, even just getting your hands on these video cards can be incredibly profitable. So this is one really good way you get signed up on the manufacturer's websites. And I encourage you all to get signed up on manufacturer's websites. Now, here's a more general place you're going to buy video cards. Places like Amazon, places like Best Buy, places like Walmart, and places like Newegg. There's something you got to be really careful about right now. Okay. See, these two cards are basically the same card. Oh, I just lost my screen. Can you guys still see that? Okay, one second here. The, the difference of $1,000 for the same video card has to do with who's actually selling the video card. You see here, one's $1,477. The same video card beside it is $689. What's going on? Well, the market's wildly overpriced right now. So these are third-party sellers that are now selling on websites like Best Buy and Amazon and, and Newegg. And it's really not good behavior. I think we should all email the, the websites and be like, get these, get these scalpers off our websites because it's confusing to new consumers like you guys. So I'm glad I can explain the difference to you. See here where it says out of stock, out of stock. These are the correct prices, $519, $799, $699. That's how much these cards should cost, not $1,500. Now, what's an easy way to make sure you don't see these, these markup guys? You click these buttons that say sold by new egg. Okay. On, on Walmart, you'll, you'll click the button that says sold by Walmart. On Best Buy, you'll click the button that says shipped from Best Buy or sold by Best Buy. But essentially, you're trying to turn off the third party sellers. Now, look, all these video cards now are normal prices. Now, none of them are in stock. But if you come back a couple times a day and you look for the video cards, like we look for the 3060 Ti. We might get lucky right now in front of you guys. You might watch me buy a bunch of video cards. So here's our cards here. Yeah, so they're out of stock, right? Out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. But if you catch it at the right time, you'll have it. Now, you can even set it up to notify. And I strongly encourage you guys to do that. So that's another way you guys can get those video cards without paying too much over, over market price. So um, as you can see right here, I've actually got a, a miner running. How cool is that? We've been mining this whole time. Now, what's wild is I'm live streaming, I'm connected to the internet, I'm using my computer, and I'm still mining at the same time. Okay, clap for me now if you want, folks. I know, it's incredible. Now, not all of you are going to have that same experience. A lot of times, if you try to play video games while you're mining on a computer at the same time, it's not going to work well. But uh, this case, it does. We have the nice new video cards, and it's got a nice, nice equipment in here. So essentially, that's everything I wanted to cover. I'm going to stop screen sharing here. This is where you can get our information. Eddie, I want you guys to all follow Eddie's website, One Hour Investing. Um, he was nice enough to set this up. I hope that this it was really practical information that helps you guys understand how it works. Please feel free to follow my Twitter, at SpillyGuy. I post stuff every day that's relevant to, to cryptocurrency, things like never forget. It's not about Bitcoin. It's about blockchain. Um, we also have a page, Good Guy Biker, on Instagram, where you'll see us doing all sorts of really cool things with the technology. This is this is Spencer here working his magic, hardware hacking the video cards. We actually this is a video card all taken apart. Normally you'd never see this, so uh, you get to see some pretty cool things there. And of course we have some really good videos on uh, Good Guy Biker on YouTube. The two that I would encourage everybody to watch for educational purposes would be this one here. So you want to be your own bank. Um, and then we, the other one that's really good here is the, how cryptocurrency works. Vulnerability. I think if you guys watch these videos, you'll, uh, you'll expand your brain quite a bit and you'll be better off. So now.